Tonight, we'll crown our first ever Chase Tag Pan America champions. For APK Blue, it's their first major semi-final, but they'll face three teams who are well used to this kind of pressure. Apex Sun, Hollywood, and GNF. Yet none of them have ever got their hands on a trophy. We're coming at you from the world-famous Arnold Sports Festival, where the most amazing parkour athletes are wowing the crowd with one thing on their mind. Don't get caught. It's the first ever World Chase Tag Pan America Championship. Hello and welcome to Columbus, Ohio and the Arnold Sports Festival, where World Chase Tag's Pan Am Championship is down to the nitty gritty. Four teams remain. You're going to see the semi-finals, a third place playoff and a final. The top seeds Apex Sun face GNF, the former World Championship finalists. And we've got the second seeds Hollywood Free Runners up against APK Blue from Indiana. Chase Tag legend Joey Adrian alongside me. Joey, is it inevitable that the top two, Hollywood and Apex, are going to meet in the final? Well, on paper before this, I would have said absolutely, that's my call. But having watched these teams go, I'm not going to lie to you, Apex has been looking a little bit shaky. But so has GNF. So that's a bit of a coin flip. On the other side, Hollywood Freerunners have been looking dominant. I would not be surprised to see them in the finals. APK Blue from Indiana have been very, very impressive and shown an all-round display with every single member of the team contributing to reach the semi-finals. What stands between them on a first ever major tournament final are Hollywood Free Runners, the number two seed. I think we've got a good shot making our way to finals. I, I, I feel really confident about that. There's no blowouts. It is all comes down to a coin toss at that point, who's feeling it and who's off. And I feel like at worst, that's where we are. I really am not surprised at all on how we've been doing. We've trained for this, we've talked over everything. Now we're not just Hollywood free runners, they're gonna run you down. We're Hollywood free runners. We're gonna be super technical, push you into the corners that we want you in, and then we're gonna run you down. Kyle Soderman has been racking up evasion after evasion after evasion. His tally stands at 11, and you would expect him to improve on that in this semi-final. But will he improve on it enough to book their place in the final? Well, this is a little different from Hollywood, who always start with Kyle Soderman, their star player. It would appear they're switching things up for this semi-final. They're sending in Matthew Hall. Now, this is a good strategy if they want to tire somebody out or if they really Hollywood trust Matthew. Evading! Athletes ready! Matthew Hall, the man from Georgia in this Hollywood team. Matthew Brother Watchman is the man after him. And by the sisters, hangs around there and then goes through the mountain all the way around the outside under the ridge. And Matthew Brother Watchman is after him. He's after him and he makes a jump, but he slams into the bar. And I'm not sure if Matthew had known that Brother had hit that bar, he might have just carried on. Absolutely, a bit of a mistake there from Brother. But Matthew just assumed his opponent would do the best thing, which is why he cuts back. He had that in his mind before he even made it to the sisters. Brother, well done recovering and still making the tag. Athletes ready! Well, they didn't start with him, but it didn't, didn't take long for Hollywood to go to Carl Soderman, did it? As he goes straight through the mountain and makes a pretty quick tag on Brother, and now Soderman is on the quad with 11 evasions to his name already in this tournament, looking to add to it. Fast spike of a tag, and if he's going to add to it, he has the stamina and the power to do it right now. Sending in Elijah Vanderpfeiffer to run this man down. He's a little more wiggly. I'm gonna. I'm a little curious how this is gonna go. Hollywood free runners. Athletes ready. So wiggly is the word that Joey describes Elijah with. Can he wiggle his way towards making a tag against Carl? I think he sort of half thought about committing there and pulled out of it because he's waiting for a better chance. Will there be a better chance? Carl decides to stop doing laps, goes back the other way, and he has wiggled his way to the tag. He's taken a knock while doing it, but job done. Great work there from Elijah. Now, this is classic Kyle. He makes that one hard cut. When he thinks you're gonna cut him off, he makes one hard cut. Elijah catches onto that and then hits him by the front Chase line. Four. Athletes ready! In comes Amos, the man who masterminded Apex to be in the greatest chase tag team we've ever seen, but has now defected to Hollywood. 
he was preparing for today by eating an entire head of lettuce, just in case you're wondering how champions prepare. But it's evidently worked, because he makes the tag on Elijah. Not a convincing one, but it was enough. Something that's so underrated about Amos is, yes, he is a tactician. He knows the game in and out, but when he needs to move fast, he can, and we saw it there by the Lazy Boy. Oh, athletes ready! Logan steps up for APK Blue. It remains nil-nil at the moment as Amos sets off under the sisters and now guns it to get around the front line. He needed to use that speed. He didn't want to be in open space for long. Hiding a little bit behind the ridge, the little ridge dance. And off he goes again, and that's where he needs the speed. But Logan tries to cut off the corner, and the time has run out. And Amos has played it to perfection to put Hollywood into the lead. Amos uses the ridge so beautifully. I've heard so many athletes refer to the ridge as OP, overpowered. If you can utilize it well every single time and your opponent doesn't chase you out, you must do it, and Amos does it to perfection. Athletes ready! Mark Bowles, the APK Blue captain, comes in. They find themselves trailing in this one. First time that's happened in this tournament, but a little tap on the backside from Mark Bowles means that Amos Rendow is not going to double the lead for Hollywood. Nice, fast work from Mark. Now, he has been falling trap into getting tagged so early. I want to see him get past the first chance and then fall into the flow of things. Omar Zaki comes into the action. Mark Bowles, who by his own admission, hasn't been playing to his full capabilities over the course of this tournament. Oh, Omar rolls out of that, bails, but recovers quite nicely. The chase is not over, certainly not over. But Mark Bowles has stepped down low. Oh, I thought he just snaked his way out of that for a moment. That is something that you do not often see from Omar. When he goes for that dive over the tilted cube, he almost always executes. On that one, he gets hung up. But Mark was unable to get his footing back and ends up trying to crawl Chase away, eight. giving Omar the time to catch up. Frank Mejia comes into it. Omar Zaki sets off around the loaded bay, and Frank makes the tag in double quick time. This is the guy who's got the fastest ever tag in World Chase Tag, two and a half seconds, and that wasn't much longer than that. Frank right there showing why so many people cut back into the open space by the ridge, because if you see your tagger going One, towards the mountain, they're always going to get you there. Oh, interesting, Frank. Frank taunting Carl Soderman running straight at him at the start of this one. And he admits he's just been tagged there, caught by the bridge. That is a fascinating matchup. I'd like to see that one again later on in this match. I'm hoping we can see a little bit more of that, because that was very quick. And the reason it's quick is because Kyle is absolutely rapid with his attempts. Athletes ready! Carl Soderman has picked up evasions in every match so far for Hollywood. He is yet to get on the board in this one, and he won't now because Matthew Brother Watchman makes the tag, nearly takes out our cameraman in the process. He will not care. Job done. Our cameraman is getting absolutely assaulted. Great work from Brother, but that was Bruce, our cameraman, the exact same one as earlier. Athletes ready! There is still just one point between these two teams. Brother is looking to level up. Matthew Hall sets off across the quad and cuts him off. He knows he's heading off towards the tilted cube, and he gets there before him. Brother with too much speed for his own good. He's practicing just going fast, not watching his opponent, and that's where Matthew, brilliant chase IQ to cut him off. Athletes ready! Elijah van der Weyver wiggling around on the chaser's plate at the start of this one. Bounces off the bars of the sisters. Hops into the tilted cue, but Matthew is away. Through the mountain, over to the ridge. Elijah trying to find a way through. Just a little slap, just to try and flush him out. But where's the chance? Is this the chance? He snipes him on the hand. I'm not sure if you're still grabbing the bar at the time, but that was the plan. And even if he didn't get one, he was still holding the bar. It was only a fraction of a second later. Yeah, beautiful snipe there from Elijah. Now, something that I love to see about that is they were playing the heaviest mind games with each other, but it just came down to a lagging arm that Elijah capitalizes on. Athletes ready! Well, we saw Elijah produce a heroic tag against Kyle earlier in this, and Kyle is looking to return the favor, but he doesn't get him there. Elijah thinks about the mountain, decides against it, and he's bought himself a second or two, but Kyle Soderman far too quick when he gets going. 
He gets a plan, he executes it. If that doesn't work, he's done it so quickly, there's gonna be more options. Yeah, Mr. Vander Pfeiffer, he is always about making you wonder where he's going, but Kyle, with the patience, just waiting there. He can do everything. He can make rapid attempts, and he can wait for you to make the mistake. Athletes ready! We get another Frank versus Carl clash, but it might be the last one to end this match because if Carl Soderman can evade here, then Hollywood are in the final. Frank chasing all the way around the outside, trying to make a move, and he forces Carl out. Oh, oh he's oh, in! Did, oh, my! Wait, did that actually carry on? Did he keep his feet off the ground? It he looks like... around the back of the mountain and very nearly came up with that. There is one bar sticking out back there that he grabbed onto and catapulted himself back in. But that's so insanely difficult to do. He could not get back on his feet to keep running. Great tag from Frank. Athletes ready! Frank versus Amos. It is big name after big name going head to head in this one. Frank needs to evade to take this to the 16th and final chase. Amos over the sisters, into the tilt to Cuba. He's just bounced off that. That might hurt him. It might hurt his chances. Frank goes low. The dive comes in. The tag is made. And Amos Rendell tags Frank Mejia. Hollywood free runners are in the final of the Pan American Championship. In my opinion, APK Blue was looking near flawless, but Hollywood Freerunners doing one better, even still not using two of their key players. And Hollywood Freerunners are through to the final. They've been in finals before. They've only been beaten by Apex Moon. Will it be Apex Sun or GNF they go head to head with to try and become the first ever World Chase Tag Pan American Champions? Thank you. Still to come, the championship final and a very special guest will be joining us. Welcome back to Columbus, Ohio. We're here at the rippling mass of muscle that is the Arnold Sports Festival. Apex Sun of the top seeds and the title favorites. Is it finally their time to shine? We know that Hollywood freerunners await in the final, but they cannot underestimate the former world finalist in GNF. I'm feeling pretty good. We're definitely having a, a pretty good year. GNF, we always come in ready for battle. We know we're gonna have to throw down. It's gonna be some of the hardest matches that we have. And all of the guys have been performing at their peak and everybody's doing their job perfectly. So I feel really good right now. Sean always stands out. I call him the Brainiac. He's like the master technician. So you, you really gotta watch out for him. Right now I'm looking at the just the match in front of us. And if all goes well, I know the guys will be able to pull it out and we can really dominate from semifinals all the way up. I just want to get on the quad. I just want to go already. It was Jake's evasions in the quarterfinals that got them to this stage. But can they beat the top seeds and then beat the second seeds Pace to become Pan American GNF champions here in game. Ohio? Athletes ready! Jake, team captain, starts as evader for GNF. Max Boyce looking to get after it. Thinks about tailing him, but decides against it. Now, Duke in open ground there from Jake Migliorado. He's made to pay for it in the end. That's something that when you see it, you question, Jake, why would you cut back on the front line? But when your opponent is standing on top of those thin ledges, it takes so much skill to do what Max just did. You have to cut back immediately with perfect precision. Athletes ready! Mike Araujo into the action. Max hanging down by the ridge, but decides to go, and it's over the mountain for him. Glides over that, turns around the tilted cube, decides to go under the mountain, but Michael Raujo has followed him all the way through and makes that tag pretty obvious to keep the score at nil-nil. Great work there from Mike. I think his eyes were lighting up when he saw Max go over the top of the mountain. You do not have many options from that spot. Mike knew the two, and he went for one. Athletes ready! Mike just chilling out by the ridge at the start of that one, but with Zeke, the former frontman in a metal band after you, I would suggest he's going to get a little bit more intense. Oh, Mike nearly stumbles out of the court entirely. How has he managed to keep his footing? Oh, but he can't quite get away. It looked like he might be recovering. He didn't quite recover enough to get speed up enough to stay away. Yeah, not enough to get that speed and Zeke doing the right thing, staying on the front line, not over committing. He does Chase drop forward. down, which gave Apex Mike a Sun chance, TV. but as you said, he couldn't get his feet back under him in time. Athletes running! 
Adam Cole into the action. As Zeke sets off, goes around the outside of the sisters there. Stops, comes back on the front line, and he's looking to do it again. It's a bold move, it's kind of worked out. He does it yet again, and heads off to the sisters, goes over them this time, loses a bit of speed, but Adam Cole is not there to take advantage. And he's come oh, into open ground. The lights go green, then they go red. I believe that's a tag, but it must have been right at the death. Adam must have been just counting that clock in his head. He knew he had one final chance. He wasted so much time on the front line. He must make that dive, and he made it count. GNF evading zero. Yeah, you can see there, just before the light went green, the tag made. It remains nil-nil. Damien comes in. Adam Cole staying down low. Damien. He's up and again, up and about again, along the front line, drops down to make the tag underneath the sisters, and he was just biding his time until the chance presented itself. So much control there from Damien. His eyes never looked at where his feet were, but he's making such precise steps onto the bars, just waiting to see, are you going under, are you going over, so that he could make his decision. Athletes ready! Joe Rizzo comes in. The Largest member of this GNF team, got a bit of range, he's got power as well. He goes across the front line and Damien was right there with him and he just wags his finger at him. You don't do that to me, pal. Yeah, you're starting to see players really do not like getting caught by the lazy boy, so they will cut up either through it or on the front line to go straight over the sisters. Joe just keeping the center control, it makes it all too easy for him. Athletes ready! Joe Rizzo in his usual starting position, hanging out right on the back boards over by the loading bay. It allows him to spring off, and he's sprung off in a route all the way around the quad. Nice little movement on the bars and platforms there. And again, he stops and turns and goes in open ground, and Santos makes a dive. Did he get a hand? Yes, he did, by the looks of it. And he's just saying there, Joey Rizzo, I was that close, that close to getting away from him. He really was, because it was just that trailing hand on the Lazy Boy. Santos, to his credit, matching Joe step for step on that high ground that Joe loves to do. Who barely got the elbow on the way over. It is a tight game, this one. GNF have talked about their sick of losing in big tournaments by the odd point here and there. Santos. Nice little work to just send Sean Law and a merry dance around the quad. And it, look at this, standing out in the open. And just, what are you doing? I mean, I mean, it's bold, it's brave, but ultimately, it's ineffective on this occasion. If it had worked, it would have looked amazing. Now, what that was, was the counter to the counter. That's exactly what he was doing pretty much that entire match. He said, oh, I'm doing this. I know what the counter is, so I'm going to do something different. But that GNF puts you flat-footed on the front line. Zero. It's not going to oh. work. Athletes ready! Sean Law jogging off towards the loading bay, but then head back to the ridge, all the way around the outside. Just nearly loses his footing, but that's a lovely little move out of the sisters. Seeing a lot of people do that in this tournament. Go into the sisters and come out halfway round. Devin is now turning this into a race. Wants to cut off the corner, but Sean Law's away. Sean Law's still away. Sean Law through the mountain. Sean Law scores! GNF lead on the top seeds trail. John Law, known for his ability to run people down and always make the tag. Here he comes in clutch for his squad, getting their first evasion against Apex Sun. Athletes ready! It was Bear Schneider who stepped up for Apex Sun in the quarterfinals in a tight game. They need him to perform now. Sean Law waits, stamps a foot to try and send Bear. In the end, he makes the move himself under the mountain, going to the tilted cube, and all of a sudden, he realized the Bear was there, and he could do nothing about it. Such a close match. Sean got that invasion. What's going on through your mind right now? Right now is to keep it going, keep the pace going, hopefully get another evasion. We don't want them catching up at all because they are such a good team. So right now, we're just thinking keep the pace going, you know? Thank you. Athletes ready! Well, Apex Sun dodged a bullet in the group stages. They only won in sudden death against Tempest. They are in problems here. 
They're in a spot of bother because GNF are doing a job on them at the minute. But Bear Schneider is waiting and waiting, and now he goes, and Jay couldn't quite figure out his footwork to get a chance. He hops up on the front line, Ooh. and Bear turns back into trouble. And there can't have been much time left on the clock when that tag was made. That was such a smart adaptation from Jake. He does not fall into the trap of going over the sisters, which is what Bear expected him to do. He cuts Jake, around, whoa. stays inside Jake the lazy boy, and then catches him on the front line. Police ready! The crowd sense an upset, the top seeds trail. And Jake Migliorata. Ooh, well, <laughs> that felt like a sort of scripted move. Yeah, yeah, he, he had the idea, but he did not execute it with the uh, ferocity that you need to in order to make that work. Athletes ready! Only four chasers left. And Apex Sun need to dig themselves out of a hole. Max Boyce is the man charged with doing that right now, as Mike Arajo has his eyes on him. On the front line, can't find a way through. Has to go around the tilted cube, but Max is gone. Cross court, goes to the ridge, jumps out of the way. The dive doesn't make contact. Max Boyce could level this up. Mike Araujo cannot get there. He cannot get there. An apex son have leveled this semi-final. We talked earlier about how overpowered the ridge is. Max does the best work he can do to circle back around the ridge again and again, using as much time off the clock Three, as he can in one, that particular four. high EQ spot. Athletes ready! Joe Rizzo with some aggression at the start of this one. Goes into the center, he's up high on the mountain, looking to drop down, and drop down he does, and you can see the trap is set, he springs it, and Max Boyce can't get out of it. Solid, slowly moving forward. Patience is the name of the game there, and just waiting for Max to make a move before he dives on it. Athletes ready! Damien, just two chasers left in regular time. It is one apiece between the top seeds and the former world finalists. And Damien makes the tag on Joe Rizzo, and it means that it is now match point to Apex Sun. Damien can be the hero right here, right now. He knows it, I guarantee. In his mind, he's just trying to take deep breaths, relax the nerves, because it, as far as high pressure situations go, it doesn't get much worse than this. Athletes ready! GNF had the chance to win it. Now Apex Sun has the chance to win it. Only one goes through to the final. Jake is looking to take this to sudden death. Damien goes over the sisters, over to the tilted cube. Jake trying to force an opportunity. Decides that up high is the way to try and do it. Now he drops down, but he's not close enough to make it count. Damien might do this. They're going to snatch the win, aren't they? They've done it again! They've done it again! Apex Sun trail for so much, and then still turn it around at the end, and it's Damien capturing that hero moment. He saw Jake was just kind of trailing towards the center. Damien knew if I just keep running my laps that I've drilled over and over again, all I have to do it for is 20 seconds. Use as much energy as I have, give it everything, and we can take the win now. Apex Sun, the number one seeds, have been in danger, and they've been in danger repeatedly in this tournament, and every time they dig themselves out of a hole. And it means that we have our final, the first ever Pan American Championship. We'll see the top seed, Apex Sun, and the number two seed, Hollywood Freerunners, go head to head. APK Blue enter the quad looking for victory and signing off in this bronze medal match. They obviously wanted to be in the final. If you get to this stage, you want to get your hands on the trophy. But they've produced some incredible stuff to get here, and at least they could sign off with a victory. GNF really did run the top seeds, Apex Sun close. Another agonizing defeat for them in the latter stages of a major tournament. But there's still a third place to play Chase for. One. And who knows, GNF. it could be decisive in getting to the World Championship. Mike Araujo starting for GNF. Evading, started by the Tilted Cube as Mark Ball steps in. And oh, I thought he had him, but he reached out and couldn't find him as Mike just uses every inch of the quad and the boards there. And now he goes over the mountain. Mark Bowles goes low, and there he is. There's Mark Bowles. Mike Araujo terrified to find him stood in front of him. Mark Bowles catching him with a very stiff hand on the tag. Immediately says, oh, my bad, I'm so sorry. Gets him back up. Now, Mark has been doing a great job 
up with tags. Evasions is where he's been struggling. We all know he has what it takes. Chase it's whether two. he can perform ABK on the day Blue. or not. Evading. Athletes ready! You can make a very strong case for Sean Law being the main man for GNF in this campaign. A campaign that could end with an effective bronze medal. He's hopping around by the tilt queue, not able to make a move. Mark Bowles really gunning it around the front line, but not gunning it quite enough against a very quick Sean Law. Yeah, Mark made his move, he knew. Right now, it's all gas or it's lost. Sean knew the exact same thing, and it just came down to a foot race and a long Zero. arm from Sean. Oh. Athletes ready! Last minute drying of the hands there from Elijah. I assume just to make sure he's got full-on grip if he's swinging around any of those bars, but he doesn't get a grip of Sean Law there, who sits off under the ridge. Elijah looking to cut across and does cut across. And when they were stood there, I think Sean Law probably realized that things hadn't gone according to plan. Yeah, especially not against Elijah. He is known for being able to squeeze through the tightest of spaces. And if you're trying to play games with him on the front line, he's always going under and making that tag. Athletes ready! Elijah wiggling around down by the sisters as Joe Rizzo steps in. There'll be no nonsense tolerated by this man. He's played this game in a very aggressive way, and that was a little bit too aggressive, not precise enough, as he bounces off the bars, and he's just looking for a way, somewhere, to make a move, and time is running out to make one, but look at the long arms there. The long arms of Joseph Rizzo saved him there. You could see the panic in Elijah's face once he realized the corner he was in, stuck by the lazy boy with Joe Rizzo inside. That's never a place you want to be. Joe making that split second decision, go now. Athletes ready! Tight game, this. Seems like all of GNF's games have been tight. As Joe Rizzo ducks under the ridge and underneath Logan Piner to set off. He goes over the sisters, and he was just hoping that he could find enough to get away. But Logan was, he was on it. It was a running start from him. He was always going to have a great chance of catching him up. It was, especially when you take that route that Logan took. You're always going to have more speed cutting across the front line and going to the sisters than wrapping all the way around. Athletes ready! Adam Cole comes into the action. Some jittery legs from Logan Piner, and he drops into the mountain from the center and heads towards the tilt queue. Waits and waits and waits, and Adam Cole waits as well. And maybe he should have made a move, as Logan can idle and waste some more time there, and he tries to duck underneath of that. I don't know how many attempts he took for Adam Cole to get a hand on him, but he had a number of them, and one of them finally made contact. He did. Logan making everything look right for the beginning, but again, just getting caught in the exact wrong spot over there, the, the, over there by the lazy boy. By the time Adam flies through, he's trying to get... Logan's trying to get so low, they both just end up on the ground. Athletes ready! Six chases in, still nil-nil as Tyler Carey jumps up onto the top of the ridge. Adam Cole hangs around. There's somewhere to hide, but <laughs> not there, because he was just waiting. I'm, I'm burning through some time here. This is fine, but as the guy gets closer and closer and closer, you've got to make a decision at some point. Yeah, Tyler playing that right, just continually creeping up, knowing he, he has nowhere to go right now. I do not need to rush. I just need to be sure about my move when I make it. Athletes ready! This will bring us to the halfway point of this contest. We are yet to see an evasion. As Tyler heads off, round by the tilted cube. Jake with that sort of panther style we see it so often from him, getting on the bars, getting in a position to strike, and then striking. And what that does so well for Jake is it keeps his center of gravity low, so he is immediate on his reaction times. Speaking of low centers of gravity, here's Frank Mejia. It doesn't get much lower than this. Zero. Oh. <laughs> I can say that, I'm Athletes short too. <laughs> Here he goes, Frank Mejia racing at pace. As if there's no obstacles there, nothing stops him. He just ghosts through them. But Jay Migliarati is hammering it all around the quad. He's got out of the way of that flailing arm, and he nearly stumbles out of the quad, but he manages to gather himself, <laughs> and he grabs hold of his shirt, Frank Mejia. His pace got him out of that one. Jake looks at him and says, where did you come from? I'm, I'm literally asking myself the same thing. I have no idea how Frank caught up there. Jake keeping his head down, watching his steps. You think he's going as fast as he can. He had a good lead, but Frank somehow Zero. catching oh. up. Athletes ready! Another roar, and a roar back 
back at him from Frank Mahir. It's a proper David versus Goliath one, this one, if David did have an unnecessary amount of accessories. Don't think he did. Can't remember the story fully. But look at that, Frank using the front line, ducking underneath it, and Joe Rizzo, Goliath does get his man in the end by pinning him before he disappears around the corner with the tilted cube. Frank might have been thinking, you know what, I, land, I won the last sprint off. I'm going to try it again here against Joe Rizzo. But Joe Rizzo coming up strong and sprinting straight out of the course to make the tag. Athletes ready! Logan over the front line. Joe starting by the tilted cube. He's off on a loading bay kind of guy, and maybe he'll go back to the loading bay because it didn't really work out for him there. Yeah, just hesitating on those decisions, that's always going to kill you. But once your opponent gets inside the tilted cube, almost every decision you make is the wrong one. Athletes ready! Well, we're getting to the point of the match where you're starting to think maybe one evasion, one point might be enough. There you think it could go sudden death at this rate. Mike hops into the tilted cube, a little stumble, and Logan has managed to get over by the lazy boy. There's not much to hide behind, so he makes a move, but he's caught by the sisters by Mike Araujo, and you still can't get a Rizzler paper between these two teams. <laughs> I've heard a lot of teams talking about this, and a lot of people are telling me that going underneath Chase the sisters 13. is the better play. Gina. Had Logan gone for that, it may have worked out, Zero. but we'll oh. never know. Athletes ready! Into the final quarter of the match, and Matthew Watchman, brother, comes into it. Mike Araujo vaults through the mountain, brother goes up top. We get to the ridge, he decides to come through down low, brother, but he still hasn't found a way to make a real attempt. This should be one. It is one. It doesn't make contact. Mike might have got away with that, and it might well be the first point, because brother gets tangled up on the bars, but still, still just reacts quickly enough to stop his man getting away across the front line. And we are coming down to the last few chases here. All of these athletes have been competing all weekend long. They have to be absolutely exhausted. Who has the best stamina and the strongest legs is really going to shine through right now. Athletes ready! The way this one is being played does not suggest that either team think this bronze medal match is meaningless. They are going for it. And brother, manages to head back towards the loading bay, under the mountain, Adam Cole scrambling down low, trying to find a way through, gets into the tilted cube, but can't make contact. Brother, by the loading bay, now the ridge. Time's ticking away. He oh, stops and goes, and a dive comes in, and that is the first point. Matthew Brother Watchman has put APK Blue into the lead. Well, they're going to DTR. I mean, in this situation, we've got 13 chases without a point. For it to get to the 14th chase, you cannot just say, oh, well, you can have it. You've only got two chances then to turn it around. And Brother has set off. He knows there's very little time left. The arm is outstretched, the lights go green, and even if there is contact, it is after the 20 seconds are up. And it means that APK Blue do go into the lead. Evasion given. It is 1-0 APK Blue with just two chases APK left. Blue Match evading. point Match to the team point. from Indiana. APK Blue. Athletes ready. Joe Rizzo to try and save this one for GNF, the former world finalists. The number four seed. But APK Blue back under the mountain a couple of times from Matthew Brother Watchman. He goes into the center of the quad and Joe Rizzo goes up high. Can he get one of those long arms on him? He can. He gets him just before he disappears under the mountain. And now it is all on Joe Rizzo's considerable shoulders to see if GNF can take this to a sudden death chase off. Brother did everything that he could to make Joe run. I know he's feeling good getting that point, making him run. Joe does come up clutch with the tag. It is his time now to tie things up. Athletes ready! Mark Bowles, the APK Blue captain, looking to win this and seal third place for his team. But Joe Rizzo sets off at pace around the outside of the quad. <laughs> goes up on top of the tilted cube. Mark Bowles gives him a little pat on the backside, and it seals victory. A tight, tight game between two quality teams. But APK Blue from Indiana take third place in the first ever Pan American Championship. This is a very new sport. It, it, we're seeing it evolve in front of our eyes. It's be particularly satisfying for you, Governor, 
to have created this event where people can find out about things for the very first time and potentially be inspired to get involved or become a fan or whatever. People come up to me and say, tell me about Chase Tech. So I have to explain it. I'm not an expert in Chase Tech, but I explained it to them what it is. And it's really fun because people are interested in all these new things. People don't want to do the same thing over and over again. So here's a new sport. Here's something new and exciting. And it's something that they have to uh, practice your flexibility, you have to practice your speed, your jumping power, all of this coordination, all of those things. And anyone can do it, so everyone can participate. Governor Schwarzenegger, thank you very much. We'll make you an expert in this. One, two, three, Hollywood! We're gearing up yeah, for the yeah. championship final in the World Chase Tag Pan America Championship. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger alongside us in the commentary box, and he is raring to go. The teams are raring to go. It is the final of the first ever Pan American Championship. The top two teams going head to head. A salute from Carl Soderman to Governor Schwarzenegger as Hollywood Freerunners take on Hollywood Apex Sun for the title. Athletes ready! Opening chase of the final. It is captain versus captain. Devin Straley comes in as Carl Soderman races off around the outside, pauses in open ground, and does it again to turn back on himself, but Devin Straley anticipates, gets the tag. It remains nil-nil. Devin making that look all too easy, doing exactly what you need to do against a guy as fast as Kyle Soderman. He cuts him off at every turn, makes him turn back on the front line multiple times before descending for the tag. Athletes ready! Hollywood sending their new recruit this year, Matthew Hall, evidently feel they can rely on him in big moments. Up on the bars, drops down, can't quite get his man. And Devon, constantly keeping his eyes, he vaults oh! over the ridge and over his man. And Governor Schwarzenegger is astonished because Devon Strelly might get the first point. And he has, the lights go green. It is the first point of the final. Apex Sun go into the lead. Devin coming in so clutch in this first match. He knows, he has been watching, he's been strategizing. He knows Matthew loves to dive through the ridge. So instead of cutting under the gun like most do, he tacks and goes over. That is the perfect counter strategy. Athletes ready! Devin Straley playing a captain's role at the start of this final for Apex Sun, the number one seed. Tagged, then evaded. Amos Rendell, he is the strategist, the master tactician, and he makes a dive through the bars. And it looks like he got his man, tag given. The lead is still won. Amos, one of the older competitors, but you would not know it by looking at him. Putting his entire body on the line every single match, full diving through the loading bay to make the tag happen. Athletes ready! Amos Rendell just teasing his ankle there. Maybe he's playing possum because he seems to be moving all right. Certainly goes through the mountain fine. Over to the tilted cube as Max Boyce goes over the top and the tag is given. <laughs> and the short sticker has not seen anything like this. That is one of the more incredible and beautiful dives that we've seen. There was a little bit of hesitation on his first trap going under the mountain. He could not hesitate on that vault over the top of the tilted cube. Apex Sun. Athletes ready! Four chasers in. It is Apex who hold the advantage, but is narrow. And Carl Soderman is a man who can close down space. He eats up ground and he eats up evaders. No hesitation from Kyle, gets that spike tag. Less than five seconds there. He is ready to put some points on the board for his squad. Athletes ready! Santos steps up, Carl Soderman. Can he level things up? Sets off under the ridge. Santos cutting inside, and he might find a way through. He does find a way through. He could see Carl Soderman on that route all the way around, and Santos just cut off some corners. This Apex squad has planned and studied Hollywood pre-runners. They know the exact tactics for every single one of their members. It's all about the execution now. Athletes ready! Omar Zaki in for Hollywood. 
flash of pink tearing around as Santos, who's been very willing to do those sort of jukes in open ground. Lovely foot placement on the bars, but he didn't quite end up where he wanted because he ended up stock still having to turn around and start the chase again almost. Yeah, the big one there is Omar. Even though he lost his footing a little bit over there on the Lazy Boy, he was able to come back, maintain high ground, and Santos could not keep his eyes on him enough to make the dodge when it counted. Athletes ready! Omar Zaki starts by the ridge, sets off. Damien. Oh, no! Oh, my word! How has that not hurt him more? I do not even know he's done. That looks absolutely horrible, and yet he keeps on going. Damien Zumterbell, but he's, yeah, he's evidently a little bit rocked there. His composure's gone, you can understand. One more. And oh, no, he oh, makes How has he done this? How has that happened? Damien has nearly knocked himself out by the looks of it. He still manages to get the tag. Omar is absolutely baffled. That was terrifying. Oh, my word. I don't even like looking at it again. He cracks his jaw and then still gets up. It looks like he's unsure of his footing. He still keeps going. And you can see Omar Zaki is mouth open. He doesn't understand how that has ended in a tag. Omar must have expected that his opponent was completely knocked out on the quad. Astonishing. Athletes ready! Well, it means that Apex are still 1-0 up after eight of the 16 chasers, but Carl Soderman is, Carl Soderman is in, and he's after him, and he claims the tag. He stopped running. He's convinced, and that's not the wise thing to do. The star player may have made a bit of a rookie error here, because if that is not shown to be a tag on the DTR, it doesn't matter, because he's going to get him by the front yeah, anyway. Definitely will be. Now, this is just some experience. Whether he felt it or not, he keeps running. Now, I wasn't so sure it was obvious, but it looked to me like Kyle was convinced. Damien said, no, tag me again. Kyle decides, OK, I'm going to do the smart thing. I'm going to keep running. But he puts his body heavily on the line for it. 1-0, Apex Sun. Well, Carl Soderman, famed for his speed and stamina. Had to use some effort to make that tag, Carl Soderman. Has it taken anything out of him as Devin Straley comes in? It is Devin who put them in charge in this one with a point, and he's keeping them in charge. It really is a top performance from Devin Straley, the team captain for Apex here. Devin seems to absolutely have Kyle's number right now. He is cutting him off at every turn, making the right decision, not dancing for too long. This is looking like classic, beautiful perfection from Devin. Athletes ready! Hollywood free runners have trailed since the end of chase two. It is only one point, it is a bridgeable gap, but time Ooh. is running out as Devin bounces off the sisters and Matthew goes low and Matthew ends up coming back and getting him at the front line. I mean, there's some smart work from the pair of them there at times. I almost jumped out of my own skin there at first. Devin missed his foot on the rail, went down hard on the sisters, but it actually worked in his favor. The thing is, after something like that happens to you, the adrenaline spikes and decision-making becomes so much more difficult. Son, athletes ready! In comes Bear. He has stepped up for Apex a couple of times in this tournament when they have needed him. They have needed him because it's not been plain sailing for the top seeds all the way through this. Matthew, lovely move through the mountain, gets through it quicker than Bear. And now there's open space to move to. Up onto the ridge. Wow, what a use of the ridge there. But he just couldn't, just couldn't maintain his footing. If he'd done so, he was away and we'd have a level game. I think had this match happened, First match of the competition. Everyone 100% fresh, had not been chasing all weekend long. Matthew gets away there. Because the legs are tired, once he gets to that straightaway after a couple close calls, he just can't keep 14. it up. Apex Sun. Ready. Both of these teams have come so close to major success and been thwarted in finals. This is a big, big moment here. Kyle gets the spike tag. He is fresh, he is ready. Again, up steps team captain Devin. Does Devin have Carl Soderman's number? If he does, it could be decisive. Athletes ready! How many times can you successfully track down Carl Soderman? You would think at one point he's going to get away. 
he sets off under the ridge. Round by the front line, actually cuts off the corner to go over the cyst and the tilted cube. Devin is there. Devin can't quite make the move. Carl Soderman too quick, too strong, too powerful. Over to the ridge, the dive comes! What a dive! What a tag! Devin Straley, what a game he's playing in the final! I cannot believe what I just saw. Devin looked like he was going to step down onto the table. I think his foot completely missed. It did! It clipped the front line, which just sent him face first. He had no other option. Reaches that arm out and somehow shutting out Kyle. Gravity made the decision for him. It turns out it was right. And now it's match point. Athletes ready! Devin Straley has done some incredible things. He's had a little bit of fortune, but Apex Sun have a chance to win it now. And Omar Zaki does get the tag for Hollywood. They are still in this, but Omar Zaki in the 16th chase out of 16 in the final match of the tournament must evade Santos Torones to take it to sudden death. This is it. All or nothing for Omar. The stress levels must be huge right now. He needs deep breaths and focus. Athletes ready! Santos comes in. A tag in the next 20 seconds will seal the title for them. Apex Sun's first title, but Hollywood want their first. Can Omar stay away? He loses his footing, it doesn't matter because Santos is tangled up at the ridge. He heads the lazy boy and under the sisters and Santos is too quick! Santos is too quick! Apex Sun, it is their time to shine! They are the Pan American champions in the tightest of contests in the final. One of the craziest matches I've ever seen. Omar really thought he had a chance there, and you could see him as the tag was made. His head goes into his hands in anguish. It was on a knife edge, but Apex Sun are the Pan American champions, and it is another runners up spot for Hollywood free runners. So we have our first ever Pan America champion. Next stop for them will be the WCT6 World Championship in London, where to win, they'll need to beat their sister team, Apex Moon. And I reckon they might fancy their chances. Let's give it up for our champion.